And now we have shit falling on us. Yeah, I guess uh, the Dutchman just decided to unload all of his stuff from his ship into SpongeBob's house somehow. I mean, he's a magic ghost, so Look there, one of those I'm not. I'm not going to question too much. I so I haven't really talked about it much. I know I've brought it up and I've talked about how it's like creepy and weird, but the French narrator is very strange in this. Just like. Because not only is it not the French narrator from the show, who is literally just voiced by the voice of Spongebob, so there's really no reason for it not to be him, but also just, like, the relationship that he has with Spongebob and the thing that- the things going on. Like, it's not a narrator, he's, like, literally speaking to Spongebob. I- I- I don't know. Rest up, little fellow. Your friends are counting on you now more than ever. Only you can save them from the revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Hey, that's an able game. Right. <laughs> I've come too far to let them down now. <laughs> I like that little laugh he does. But yeah, here we are, folks. It's the last actual level of the game. It's the Dutchman's place. I don't actually know what it's called. I think it's called Dutchman's Graveyard, but I don't think so, because it's not a graveyard, it's like his ship, but you're also not on his ship until the end. Um, and yeah, you have these, uh, pirate ghosties. Uh, which weirdly, um, like, I'm, I know I just got hit by one, but I've, I've always found them, like, more easy to deal with than regular enemies. Uh, and now get ready for booty jokes. Be you here to steal my booty? Oh, believe me, I have no interest in touching your booty. I just want to find my friends and get them home. You must mean those new crew members. <laughs> the Dutchman's got all them fancy britches on his ship while we're stuck out here in the graveyard. Wow, I guess it is a graveyard. That doesn't sound very fair to me. To make matters worse, someone grabbed my booty while I was polishing this cannon. So now, I'm stuck out here with no pay! I wish I could do something to help you, Mr. Pirate, but I need to find a way to get past that other ship if I'm ever gonna get my friends out of here! I'll tell you what! You bring me one sack of booty, and I'll see what I can do to help you get across! Uh, so yeah, get ready for a million, um, booty double entendres in this level because this is the entire level not getting a sack of booty for this one pirate but getting several sacks of booty or booties i don't know for a number of pirates it's literally the whole level um and yeah i mean this level is fine uh as like a last level um but it feels kind of slight it kind of measures up to my, uh, or it kind of makes sense with my theory that, like with most Spongebob games and most licensed games, it always feels like the end. Like, I, I don't know, because, like, with movies and stuff, this is where it would be nice to know exactly how these games are made, because with movies, like, the end of the movie is almost never the last thing that they do. Um, like, they don't do them in order. I guess it makes a little more sense for a game to do it that way. But, it always feels like toward the end, like, the animations get even more, like, fucky, and the levels get, like, I won't say lazier, but, I don't know. I feel like this is, it's literally just doing this, but in a few different areas, and... They don't really... I think it would have been cool if, like, you know, they made use of all the costumes or something. I mean, I have the fishing gear on right now just because I want to catch the jellyfish. You really don't have to use any of your power-ups in this. Um, and, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a culmination of the game in quite the same way that a lot of other game endings typically do. Um, and, uh... Yeah. <laughs> that kind of sucked. Uh, 
I, I don't want to, like, go out of this LP bitching, but it's just kind of an underwhelming level to me. I, I think it looks cool. Like, I, I think this is a really neat-looking level, and I almost fucked myself again, but I managed to not. Apparently, they did have more ideas for this level um, that they didn't or couldn't do, um, and apparently those some of those ideas ended up being in the Dutchman's Graveyard level in Battle for Bikini Bottom, apparently. No, I don't know anything about that. It was probably the Dutch. So, I don't know what they were. I feel like, if anything, it was probably the whole thing with, like, the two warring ships or whatever at the end. Because I can't really imagine that anything from the beginning of that level would fit here. Um, but that makes me wonder why they aren't in this game. Like, because I don't think there's anything particularly, like technically prohibitive uh, about this game versus Battle for Bikini Bottom. Although, on a technical level, I gotta say, comparing this to Battle for Bikini Bottom, it's pretty amazing that there was only a year in between the two of them. Just, I don't know, the... I, I think it, it it might just be a design thing, because I, I'm sure if you actually, like... Well, no, I was about to say, I, I'm sure if you did, like, the virtual square footage of the levels in that game versus this one, then they would be roughly similar, but I actually think all of the areas in this game are pretty closed off, but something about the levels in, in BFBB feel more open, and I don't know, the, just the world feels a little more believable, but that's not to knock this game, necessarily, because I think there are... Like, there are things about what this game is like that I really like. I don't know, I find this game weirdly... It's eerie in a way, but also many parts of it are kind of comforting, oddly. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. I kind of touched upon it when I was talking about Goo Lagoon, how, like, it feels a little bit eerie like the rest of the game, but... I don't know, it's just that kind of, like, summery vibe, and especially when you're up in the rain clouds. I don't know what it is about that game, like... Whenever I say this, people look at me like I'm weird, but... Uh, there's something about, like, the smell of rain. Like, especially the humidity, like, right after it rains, and just the way that the air smells and feels that I just find really nice. Like, I don't really like the rain, and I don't really like when it's super humid, but just on a sensory level, I, I like it. And, like, beaches have that smell sometimes just because the air is wet. Um, and especially on, like, a cloudier, less hot day. Like, not necessarily a cold or overcast day, but maybe somewhere in the middle. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's like... I don't know how to describe the, the smell and everything, but it just is nice, and the Goo Lagoon level, I, I, when I was playing it for this run, I was thinking to myself, like, I can, like, smell that kind of air, especially when I'm in the um, storm cloud part with the lighthouse, and when you can see the storm clouds off in the distance, um, and, like, when I'm on the pier and stuff, I don't know, it just makes me think of that, like, hot of that, like, summer, humid, rainstorm kind of smell and feel to the air. And maybe it's just, like, memories I have deep in my subconscious from my childhood on days like that, but it makes me think of, like, going to school or, uh, I don't know, I did a lot of playing outside with my friends even when it was rainy and stuff, and me and my friend, we would actually like to, you know, pretend to make movies. We didn't even have a camera, but we would just act out what we would want a movie to be like, and just in his big backyard, and, um, we would always love when it was raining or when it had just stopped raining because there were some, like, movie ideas we had. Like, we loved making fake war movies. We know, we knew dick about war, 
uh, like, about not just, you know, war's hell or whatever, but I mean, like, the the historical wars that we were pretending to make movies about as kids, which is so funny that that's something that I did. Um, because I don't even like war movies. I hated, I didn't, I certainly didn't even watch them when I was a kid, but, uh, you know, I was playing around. It was just for fun. I was a child. Um, but I don't know, maybe it takes me back to that, or, I don't know. It just is very... And I mean, in general, I've talked before about just the general comforting aura of a lot of, like, early 2000s, late 90s media, be it... I mean, primarily, obviously, I've talked about it with movies and video games and TV shows, and it's very obvious why it has that aura to me. I'm sure it does not have that feeling to, you know, someone who's 40 and watching or playing those same things, but it's because I grew up with them and because I recognize them and because that familiarity from a time in my life that was much simpler where I was anxious about far fewer things, I had fewer responsibilities, I dropped the booty. I did a lot of dropping the booty in this part. This part's actually kind of difficult because of this, uh, these clouds that puff out of the ears of this big Dutchman head. That's an amazing camera angle. Um, you really have to be far away. Like, the hitbox on this is pretty unforgiving for the most part. Like, up here. I thought that I was pretty far away from it and not touching it, but it ended up hitting me anyway. So I had to go back a couple times. But yeah, like, that's that's why those things are comforting. That's why it's nice to watch it. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's just what the feeling of nostalgia is, is, you know, just something makes you viscerally, like, transport yourself back to a time where you were happier. Even if the actual time itself wasn't that great, because, I mean, I mean, that would be true pretty much any time, because, I mean, the 90s and early 2000s, I mean, just on an objective level, in America, we're pretty fucking garbage. Um, I mean, you know, 9-11 happened, and there was the War on Terror, and that's when... Uh, just a lot of bad shit happened. I don't need to fucking tell you about it, you know. Um, you know, you know the world. Um, but it was my experience of them. But it's not even just with movies and video games and stuff. I mean, even stuff like... I like watching trailers for movies that I remember, or commercials that I remember from TV. Um, even logos, you know, like the opening logos for different production companies and video game companies for stuff I would watch and play. Like, um, oh man, I already forget what it is. Maybe I'll, I'll put it in the video or in the description or something, because it's in my liked uh, videos on YouTube, but... Uh, the the logo it, they had it for like educational videos and it was um they had it in front of magic school bus on the magic school bus vhs tapes i had where it was a chalkboard i forget what it was called but i i just it just gives me that that fuzzy feeling okay i'll just wait for you here i don't know it, and you know and video games are a particularly potent, I think, kind of version of that, and I think it's because they're interactive, because your, you know, your mind and body are actively involved in the experience of it, and so, I mean, that's part of why I love playing Battle for Bikini Bottom so much. It's not just because I think it's a good game, and I think I have fun when I play it, but because whenever I play it, you know, there's, I've, t I talked about them in my LP of it, where there are specific areas and missions in that game where I just, for whatever reason, my mind has held on to a random memory of me playing it when I was a kid, not even anything special happening most of the time, but I just can remember that day or whatever, and it just makes me feel nice, and I, I do get that from this game. Not quite as much, because I didn't play this game nearly as much. Um, I It's a little... It was a little too unwieldy uh, for me uh, in comparison. 
just because I thought that Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game and Lights, Camera, Pants were so much more fun. Um, and, and more, like, polished. But, I don't know. It, it, it's still nice. I'm glad that I can share it with all of you. I'm gonna be honest, um, I've been feeling, I mean, <laughs> for, first of all, like, what else is new? This is not, like, a, a new development in my life, but, uh, and, you know, part of it, obviously, is all this pandemic bullshit and having to stay in the house and not really doing anything, which exacerbated the feelings I already had of just being kind of, like, useless and not knowing what to do with my time and everything. That's just kind of been amplified by this whole thing. I like this part. I, li I like these swinging anchors, and I like shooting through them. It's fun. Like I said, I think this level looks cool. I just wish they had done more with it. But yeah. I, to my knowledge, you can pr you can pretty badly fuck up that shot and still make it. And yeah, here here's me trying to do an epic jump so I can get a good pose when I'm spinning around. And I succeeded. Hooray! We got all the tiles, and now we have to put the puzzle together in our brains. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, I've been feeling a little bit depressed lately about um, video stuff. Not so much here, because I like doing these videos, I know that the audience for them isn't huge, but I don't know, I kinda like it. It's, I mean, obviously it would be cool if more people watched these, so I could just have more interactions with people about it, and share this stuff with more people, but I don't know, I, I like just making videos where I play games that I like and just talk about my life or whatever I feel like talking about. But, I don't know. It, it's just... Especially with my main channel, uh, you know, the stuff that I'm putting out is not stuff that people really want or care about, at least not as many as when I first got all the subscribers that that channel has. And I just feel like I've been in this uh, state of, like, stasis with that channel for a long time, and it's impossible to get out of. So, I don't know, I've, I've been retreating into these sort of nostalgic things a lot more than usual, and so doing these things for this channel um, is very comforting, having even something as, you know, simple and minor as this, but having some sort of, like, quote-unquote creative outlet for, you know, wanting to go back and... Yeah, like, I completely fucked that up. And yeah, this whole level is actually one, like, area, so you have to go through the entire level again to get the treasure. Uh, and now all of these kids are going to roast the Dutchman's mother.